Hey guys, Aubrey here. Welcome to the All Ears English YouTube channel. Today's episode, Lindsay and I teach you several phrasal verbs that you can use about education. So when you have a chat with a friend about a new class you're taking, you'll have great native phrasal verbs to use. And be sure to go to allearsenglish.com slash fluency score to take a free two minute quiz to find out what is your English level. All right, enjoy the episode. This is an All Ears English podcast, episode 1492. You'll be really into these phrasal verbs for education. Welcome to the All Ears English podcast, downloaded more than 150 million times. Are you feeling stuck with your English? We'll show you how to become fearless and fluent by focusing on connection, not perfection. With your American host, Aubrey Carter, the IELTS whiz, and Lindsay McMahon, the English adventurer, coming to you from Arizona and Colorado, USA. And to get your transcripts delivered by email every week, go to allearsenglish.com forward slash subscribe. Be into, take up, and go over. What do these phrasal verbs all have in common? Today, let's talk about education and how you can have real conversations about this topic using high-level phrasal verbs. Hey, Aubrey, how's it going? We are on video in today's episode. We haven't done a video episode together yet. This is exciting. I know. I know. It's always fun to do something for the first time. So it's fun fun. to be, we'll be on YouTube together, just you and I. It'll be good. Yes. Very (laughs) cool. Very cool. Awesome. So what are we getting into today, Aubrey? Let's let our listeners know. So this is the second episode of our phrasal verb series. If you guys missed it, go check out the first one. We talked about phrasal verbs you'll use for travel in episode 1489. Yes. And this is our second one. This is based on um, one of our listeners' questions. Adrian had this great Mm -hmm. question about phrasal verbs and what's the best way to learn them. And (sighs) we were talking about how sometimes it's really tough if you try to pick one verb and yes. learn all of the phrasal verbs that it could have. Yeah, I mean, he said in his question, I'm really struggling every day, right, with different terms. And I can totally feel that, right? We could feel that in our listeners and our students. We can memorize vocabulary words all day long, but if we don't know how to really use them, we get in trouble, especially with phrasal verbs. Right, Aubrey? Yes, yep, yes. exactly. Like if you take the verb take, right? Yeah. Think of all the verbs that you can use, all the phrasal verbs with every particle, take up, take on, take away, Take over, take out, take off, take into, take for, take with. You're stressing (laughs) me out. Stop, stop. It's too much. They all have a totally different meaning, right? (laughs) It's just too much. So if we attempted to memorize that list, it just wouldn't work, guys. And I bet that that is actually what a lot of our listeners are doing right at the moment. They're trying to memorize these lists. Guys, stop doing that. It does not work, okay? Yeah. Phrasal verbs are something unique about English, but you can do it if you learn it by by what? How should we do it, Aubrey? Yeah. So this is one really great way is to try to learn it by thinking about a situation that you'll use them in yes. and brainstorming all the phrasal verbs that will come up in that situation. Yes. So Love today we're going to talk about education, taking a class, mm-hmm. which is interesting because last time we were talking about how travel has changed so much with tech. Yes. It's really different from when we were younger. And it's the same with education. It's yes. gone so much more online, much more convenient. Mm-hmm. Most classes, the average class that I would take would definitely be online today. Oh my gosh. And things have changed so much with Coursera, with Udemy. I mean, there are so many platforms where we can learn something online nowadays. Any skill we want, it is so cool. It really is. I know. It's true. I actually just signed up for this world literature course. I won't go into a ton of details, but just for fun. I'm like, wow, why not? Right? (laughs) It was actually like offered to my daughter through this thing because of online school. And I was like, I want to check that out. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Very, very cool. Very cool. Well, before we get further into this, though, Aubrey, I do want to remind our listeners, if you guys are in China and you're listening to this, we do have another way to experience All Ears English. And what is that, Aubrey? Yes, right? This is so exciting. We have one of our listeners that's helping us with this. And it's called WeChat. So if you have access to that, subscribe to WeChat. Mm -hmm. Then you can see all of the social media posts in Asia, right? 
Yeah. Where can you get WeChat? So WeChat is just WeChat. So they they know. You guys know. If you're in China, you know what WeChat is. It's like it's the universe. It's amazing. It's like Facebook times ten. <laughs> um, but guys, we have an I account. Want it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I wish we could use it. Yeah, I we know. have an account over there, guys. It's called All Ears English Official. And shout out to Sandy for helping us out with that. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. So, so check it out. Check out WeChat. And this is going to be really fun because. Yeah. You guys, a lot of our listeners um, have, maybe you have access to Instagram, Facebook, Mm -hmm. but if you don't and you have WeChat, we're there too. We're everywhere. Yeah, we're everywhere now. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's dive in then for our listeners. Guys, I hope you're taking notes. If not, you want to start doing it right now. All right. Yes, definitely. So the first phrase that we're going to talk about is be into, which this is a very native, natural way to talk about something you're interested in. Yes. You could say, oh, I'm really into this book that I'm reading right now, or I'm into this article or documentary I just watched. This is so common. I have to say, this is one of, if this had to be on the list of top 20 most natural phrases, it would be on that list in my mind, Aubrey, because this happens all the time, right? Maybe different podcasts that we're into. I go on these little kicks where I get interested in something and I just binge on that podcast and then I just move on. <laughs> yep, <laughs> to that's something exactly else. right. And yep. we don't say, I am interested in that. We just don't. We say, no. I'm into it. Ooh, I'm really into learning about. Fruit, fruit dehydration lately. That's random, but I am because <laughs> wow. I've been, I'm off sugar. So I've been drying a lot of fruit. I got a dehydrator and there's all these tips and tricks of what you should put in to make like fruit leather. What? So I'm really into that lately. <laughs> you should come back and report. We should do an episode on this hobby. I would be interested to know the result. So is that, so you're drying out the fruit to take the sugar out of it? Is that what you're doing? Or well, what, just because I can't eat, I'm doing a food competition where I can't eat anything oh. with actual artificial sugar, added sugar at all. Oh. So I'm just, I put like apples and plums and peaches Mm. and strawberries pureed, basically kind of like an applesauce. And then you just flatten it on a sheet and you make fruit leather. So even though fruit has like natural sugars, that's allowed, luckily. Yeah. And when you dry it, like dried pineapple is like candy. It's It's good. So good. Okay. Okay. So that's becoming the sweet, the sweet that you're getting in your diet. Yeah. That's my sugar replacement is That's really good. A lot of people (laughs) could learn from that. How do we get sugar out of our diet? But we could talk about that another day. That's a big yeah, topic, especially right. in this country, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's good to point out that you can talk about being into anything, right? Yes. It doesn't have to be a book you're reading or a movie. <clears throat> anything you're interested in, you just say, ooh, I'm really into that lately. Exactly. So guys, definitely write that one down if you want to you know, connect with that native speaker to sound natural. Again, like you said, Aubrey, if you say I'm really interested in X, it's boring. It makes you further at a distance from the person because it's too formal. Okay, right. good. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then how about take up? This is another yeah. one where you we don't say, oh, I'm starting to da da da, whatever, a yeah. hobby or something. We mm-hmm. often will say, I'm going to take up, like I'll take up volleyball yeah. or take up mm-hmm. a new sport or a new hobby. It means exactly. you're going to like take on a new challenge or a new task. Exactly. Exactly. Like when I lived in Japan, I tried to take up karate or as they say, karate, <laughs> but it didn't yes. work out so well. Because no, all did you not like it or you weren't good at it? What happened? I was just bad at it. The equipment was so heavy. It was weighing me down. I just felt like it wasn't for me, oh, but I wanted to try to take up something new. You know, when you travel, you live abroad, you want to do something different, something interesting. Yeah. Yes. And I noticed when I was describing it, I used take on. And we do use that a little Ooh. differently. We'd say like, I'm going to take on this challenge. But if it's mm. something fun, like a hobby or a sport, we say, I'm going to take it up. I'm going to okay. take up this fun thing. Mm. I'm going to take on a challenge, right? So that, that could be an episode in itself that we could do another totally. day, right? I mean, the nuance <laughs> difference between take on, take up. But guys, write that down and understand that there are differences and you want to get to the level where you can know those differences. That's where we want to get you. That's really good. Really good. Yeah, yes. for sure. And then another okay. one we use a lot when we're talking about taking a class, something that would happen in a class is go over, meaning yes. to like check something carefully, right? Mm-hmm. I go over my essay really well before I submit it. Yeah, really common in classes. Teachers would say this all the time, all throughout the years of education, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And a teacher would explain when they're discussing something, they would maybe say, I want to go over the instructions with you, right? So yes. you probably, if you've taken an in-person class, you've likely heard this phrasal verb, go over. 
Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, that is one of the most common phrases that teachers use. Absolutely. And then there's read up on. And this I feel like is more about kind of becoming a student, like educating yourself on something independently. Right, Aubrey? Exactly. Right. Researching or studying something Mm -hmm. by reading about it a lot. Right. And um, you'll often hear someone will say like, oh, I've been reading up about whatever topic, right? Obesity. Mm -hmm. And I've discovered these interesting facts. It's a great way to start a conversation when you want to talk to somebody about something you've been reading up on. Yeah. And there are other uh, phrasal verbs. What comes to mind? Do you know the phrasal verb to buff up on something? To buff up on it? That's another one. Less common, but I think- I need to buff up my Spanish before I go to Mexico. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or polish. Polish up? Polish? Yeah. Polish? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Polish up. (laughs) I'm going to polish up my Spanish. Same thing, right? If you feel like you have knowledge of something, Mm -hmm. but you're a little rusty. Exactly. So just like you would buff or polish metal that had rust on it, we do the same thing with information Mm -hmm. and knowledge. Yeah, interesting. interesting. So we could cover that another time too. I'm getting lots of episode ideas here. Yeah, right? <laughs> I know each one of them, there'd be so many like sample sentences you could spend a whole episode. But I love For that sure. if you think about, you know, if you're going to take a class or talk to someone about something you're learning about, mm-hmm. it'd be great to have knowledge of all of these. So you have this really yeah. full, interesting conversation full of these yeah. great native phrasal verbs. Exactly. You have a more dynamic conversation. And, you know, you, like I said, that person's going to sound going to be more interested in hearing what you're learning, what is the content, if you can introduce it in an interesting way. It's all about how you introduce it, right? Exactly, right? Mm -hmm. It's so native and natural to say, oh, I've been reading up about, and then whatever you've read an article about recently, that's the just probably the best way you could start Mm -hmm. an interesting conversation. That makes me really interested in what you're about to tell me. (laughs) Exactly. reading up on it means you've looked into it a little bit and you have something interesting to say about it. Yeah. And I know our listeners love to do this. You guys are kind of self-educators, right? You guys take learning into your own hands. So this will be especially applicable to your conversations, right? Yeah, Yeah. definitely. And then our last two two are Mm -hmm. more common for... um, um, an in-person class, but also online, I guess, because you would say mm-hmm. like, a t- uh, for so for handout, you'd uh-huh. say, oh, a teacher is going to hand out some books or yeah. hand out treats before a class. That's yeah. the best. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. But right. Mm-hmm. hand in or turn in, we also use for online classes. If you're like, I'm going to hand in my assignment. Interesting. I think yeah. even if we're like digitally submitting it, we still mm-hmm. say hand in. Don't you, Lindsay? Yeah, I think I would. And then it's also interesting that maybe this is too much for our listeners for today, but we'll talk about another day. On an online course, you would see the word get, you know, get the handouts as a, as a noun. Oh, and that's that, true. And that becomes like a PDF. Make sure you download the handouts before you finish today. Yeah. So, Oh, yeah. That means anything that would be handed out in an in-person yeah. class to you mm-hmm. is still a handout, right? It's still Definitely. an assignment or something that you, information you need to have. Yeah. Exactly. And we also exactly. say turn in. I'm going to okay. turn in my work, turn in my assignment. And we'd use this for an online class too. If you're submitting something, you yes. can say, oh, I turned in my report yesterday. I'm so glad it's done. Exactly. <laughs> Aubrey, what kind of student were you in school? Did you always turn in your stuff like early or on time or yes. were you sometimes I, late? Yeah. I was the best student. I took school very seriously. I turned yeah. everything in early. If you were allowed wow. to work ahead in like a workbook, I would get it all done as soon as I could. What That's about good. you? Kind of similar, maybe not to that extreme, but pretty similar. I was never late on assignments. I think yeah. you and I both have a certain work ethic for sure. All of our team does really here at Allers English for sure. uh, to get stuff done. Yeah, absolutely. I was a little worse when I got to college because I was working uh, full time. So yeah. there were oh. sometimes like I'd miss a deadline deadline or mm. something would happen, but it devastated me. Like I yeah. take it very seriously to be a yeah. good student and getting yeah. good grades. So if ever yeah. I didn't, it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. So the the adjective there is kind of like conscientious, right? I love that adjective yes. for our listeners. That's a high level adjective to be conscientious, to really care about you know, getting things done that you're supposed to get done is that word. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Did you have an on-campus job when you were in college? Yes. Uh Uh I worked Mm -hmm. for uh, the religion department, actually. It was sort of a comparative religion department. Nice. As um, there was an office where the teachers would all bring in projects and we oh, it was cool. me and whoever else was there we oh. would do their copies and their typing and proofreading oh, so wow. a lot of it was interesting because they were researching yeah. for books oh, yeah. and papers and oh. we did a lot of the grunt work for them interesting <laughs> kind of like being a clerk in a law office or something like that it sounds mm-hmm. like that doing the research behind the work interesting okay yeah, cool, a lot like cool. that yeah it was fun it was a great job for a student right yeah but I great. had a lot of jobs actually I, I worked too much during school I, I also like worked at a fast food place or whatever 
like I was working too much during school because I didn't want to have debt. So I was trying yeah. to like pay no, for that's... school as I went. Mm, no, that's that's legitimate for sure. Yeah, so. But it's hard. But then right? it makes it hard to keep your grades up when you're working. It, yeah, that's country. tough. You have to find that balance for sure. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Okay, cool. We now have an official WeChat account. So if you are in China and you want a new and different way to interact with All Ears English, then go and find All Ears English official on WeChat. See you there. All right, so we have a role play then, right, Aubrey, today to yes. show our listeners how it works? Let's do it. Yeah, do you want to start us out? Yeah, so Aubrey, have you taken up anything new lately? Yeah, I started a world history course at the community college. Ooh, how's that going? I love it. I've always been super into history, so it has been fascinating. Awesome. We have that in common. I've been reading up on history, the history of banking, and really it's so interesting. Do you do a lot of group work in class or is it more like listening to a lecture, for example? Oh, some of both. The instructor will go over a topic and then hand out the assignment. We usually discuss it in a group and then write something to turn in. Nice. Does the teacher go over the results with you? No, that's one thing I really don't love. We don't get our work back and a lot of it isn't graded. And I'm really into feedback. It motivates me to always be improving. So that's hard. Yeah, I understand that. I would be frustrated by that too. Yeah. What about you? Any hobbies or interests you've taken up recently? Yes, motocross. <laughs> what the heck is motocross? <laughs> I don't even know what I put that, that is. In. I knew you wouldn't read it ahead of time. I was like, <laughs> it's like dirt bike racing. Oh, okay, that sounds right on. <laughs> I picked something. I'm like, what would Lindsay You're not like, actually would be have the taken up? Of what I would like? <laughs> That's uh, awesome. I can just see you on a motorbike, <laughs> dirt bike racing. Never. Not so I mean, much. Never. I did grow up in New Hampshire, so there were kids that were always talking about their dirt oh, yeah. bikes and, you know, that that kind of stuff. But no, I've never you're, been on you're one. not so interested. <laughs> they seem so unsafe. Okay. I, I mean, we may have listeners who are into motocross racing. Awesome. That's got to be like a real <laughs> adrenaline rush, like for yeah. thrill seekers. But sure. I feel like injury is inevitable. I mean, it's like everyone finds their own adrenaline rush. Out here in Colorado, people are really into rock climbing. And I think it's insane. I mean, it's nuts. Oh, I love rock climbing, but uh, it is so dangerous, especially outside. I was always, I rock climb, but I'm very safe, harnessed, like double checking all of okay. the clips. Okay. But I have seen people who will like boulder up Free pretty solo. high, not oh, yeah. clipped in mm -hmm. at all. And that's mm -hmm. so dangerous and scary. Oh, yeah. for sure. Have you seen the documentary Free Solo? With No, uh, but I heard about it. I want to watch that. Yeah, I think we recommended that to our listeners in an episode a long time ago. Definitely go check that out, guys. It's about yes. a, a guy who's literally climbing up El Capitan without ropes, right? That's Just your body. Nuts. No security net. So if you fall, you die. <laughs> I don't understand. That's I'm not really a thrill seeker. I want to feel safe and secure. Yeah. So that's yeah. not my game. Yeah, I feel like the older, I, I just feel like I just can't, I think some part of his brain is missing or something, honestly. Maybe. Because um, that's the thing, trigger. you can rock climb very safely, like yeah. at an indoor gym or even outside if you're taking all the precautions and making sure yeah. you're clipped in. But, yeah. or you can choose to do it choose in do a that. way that's death defying. Yeah, which... there are a few people in the world that do that. Anyway, side point here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, let's go back to the role play here. What do you think, Aubrey? What did we do here? The first one, what did I say? Yeah, you asked me if I had taken up anything new lately. Yes. So yeah, just that first one we talked about to take mm -hmm. up a hobby or a class or anything that you're starting, you could yeah. say, have you taken up anything new? Yeah. yeah. And this is interesting, this next one. So you you put super in the middle of something, right? So you said, mm. I love it. I've always been super into history. That's so natural. Right, Aubrey? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We tell our IELTS students over on IELTS Energy mm. all the time, we're like, use super as slang in part one of the IELTS exam because it's the easiest okay. way to emphasize something and throw in that slang. So you get yeah. the variety you need for vocabulary there, right? Mm -hmm. And it. it's so native and natural, like you said. So you yeah. have be into... Okay. Instead, you can say, oh, yeah, I've always been super into super that. Into. It does make it really, it immediately increases that vocabulary score, maybe pronunciation, yep. right? So guys, by the way, you know, go over and down and subscribe to the IELTS Energy Podcast. Aubrey and Jessica are over there three days a week getting you ready for IELTS. Very yes, cool. right. Yeah. Come check us out if you haven't. If you are taking the IELTS exam definitely. anytime in the future, come yes. and subscribe to our podcast. Definitely. You guys don't want to miss that. And then I said, I've been reading up on the history of something right? Going, taking a deep dive into some topic. Okay. Yep. And then you said, 
And then I started talking about my class. I made this an in-person class on purpose so I could okay. talk about some of those in-person things that happen. The instructor yeah. will go over a topic, okay. meaning explain it, discuss it a little bit, and then mm-hmm. hand out an assignment. Yeah. Although I guess you could say, you know, on an online course, they could also go over something, right? For sure. Of course. Yeah, that's true, Mm -hmm. right? They still go over the instructions with you. It's Mm -hmm. a lot of often video lectures and modules and things like that. So it all happens on online classes too. Yeah. And then write something. And then you say, we usually discuss it in a group and we write something to turn in. So again, that's like hand in, you give it to your, your teacher. Okay. Yep, yes. Exactly. And, and then, then I you said, asked if the it? teacher goes over the results with us. Okay. Ask that again. And then I said, I'm really into feedback, meaning I love feedback. I need it to be able to learn. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And I think this is pretty common, right? Mm-hmm. We like, oh, I need to know how I did on the last assignment so that I can improve and, yeah, and do better on sure. the next one or just know how I, where mm-hmm. I'm at. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And this time I didn't put super in there. We don't want to do it too much. Right. right? Um, yeah. But sometimes just occasionally. And then I, uh, you asked me, have you taken up anything or any hobbies or interests you've taken up recently? Okay. Yeah. This is an interesting structure, right? To, to start yeah. with the subject that way, say any hobbies or interests you've taken up recently? Exactly. Exactly. So I like that. That's more natural than saying, are there any hobbies? Right? Exactly. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a little more informal for just like a conversation with a friend. Mm-hmm. And yeah, natives do this all the time. We'll just use um, in- informal sentences, yeah. partial sentences, mm-hmm. right? Taking and out the verb, it, you know, mm-hmm, just completely the verb. dropping the verb. You'll also see it on advertisements, like in the subway in New York, you see advertisements where they just drop the verb completely. Yep. Uh, feeling tired these days, right? They drop yeah, are you. the subject. Or got milk. Remember got milk? <laughs> right, just drop right, the course. subject. We don't care of who. Course. We don't what care. What about you? You got it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you guys are allowed to do that too. For um, sure. All right. So guys, remember two things to do. Hit subscribe on the podcast to get the next episode in this series and all the episodes of All Ears English. And Aubrey, again, where can they find All Ears English if they are in China and want to hang out on WeChat, right? WeChat. Yes, <laughs> we're on WeChat now. Thank you again, Sandy. We're so yes. excited to be there. So come check us out on WeChat. Awesome. So what should we leave? What should we go away with today? Well, it's just so don't get stuck with phrasal verbs. I think yeah. some students, some listeners avoid them or are just mm-hmm. confused about how to study them. Yes. Just like Adrian's question, how how do we go about this? This is a great way to pick a topic, pick a circumstance and think about all the phrasal verbs that'll happen. So this is what we're yeah. going to do in this series. This yes. is part two. We have four more. So make sure you're subscribed. You don't miss any of them mm. to learn all the phrasal verbs for all of these six different situations. That just yeah. makes it so much easier for them to come to mind when you're in that situation. Exactly. I wonder what the topics are for the next ones, because I feel like, you know, these are topics that we could easily get passionate about. Changes in education, travel, technology and travel. I wonder what's next. So you guys got to come back, check it out and make sure you catch that next episode. Yes, definitely. And I will see you there, Lindsay. Sounds good. Aubrey, talk to you soon. All right. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to All Ears English. If you are taking IELTS this year, get your estimated band score with our two-minute quiz. Go to allearsenglish.com slash my score. And if you believe in connection, not perfection, then hit subscribe now to make sure you don't miss anything. See you next time.